who we all come from right now? Shem, Shem, right. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Huh. Right? So the most I created everybody that you can see on this earth to who? Shem, Ham, and Japheth and their wives. You know, them having children, their children having children going forth on. You see what I'm saying? So every person on this earth, every man didn't create a nation or people didn't come from every man. See, I got a breakdown on Dan. But you see, Dan only had one son. You see? So did that, did that son create the nation of Dan? No. Or else, you can't put Dan there when he's not there, can you? You can't put him there. Good Revelation 22. I mean, y'all did y'all see Dan? I mean, maybe I missed it. I didn't see Dan. Y'all see Dan? I didn't see Dan. Go to uh, Revelation 22 and... Uh, 18 and 19. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, the Most High shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So you can't add anything to the Bible. It's self-sufficient on its own. See, the problem is, I think, People do people still think that the Most High allowed uh, Esau, because he's the one that published the Bibles, to present this Bible in a way that we can't get the truth? No. He, that's why he says, "If any man shall add unto these things, the Most High shall add unto him all the plagues that are written in this book." Read verse nineteen. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, the Most High shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. That's right, man. So you got to be careful, you know, in the way that we look at this Bible and put our own inputs into here, into this Bible, you know. And not being justified by what it is that's written in the Bible. Because see, get uh, 2 Peter 1 and 20. The book of 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Go ahead. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. So, who wrote what we're reading now? It was written by Moses. The first five books of Moses. It was concerning, you know, our beginning, the beginning of time, all the way to the time we came out of Egypt and so forth. And came, went into the land of Canaan. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. So, what happened? Read. But holy men of the Most High spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So we understand Moses was not like any other man. Remember the Most High speak to everyone else in visions and dreams. But Moses was not like that. He spoke to him mouth to mouth from the angel. As we read, that's why I showed you that the Most High sent the angel, but he spoke to him one on one. You see? He didn't have to go to sleep and get a vision or a dream and he talked to him in a vision or a dream. No, he was right there with him through the angel who's bringing forth the minister, bringing forth the word of the most high. You understand? Which we call now the Holy Spirit, holy angel. He make of his spirits angels. You can say holy angel, holy spirit. You see what I'm saying? But given the word of the most high minister means what they bring in the word of the most high. So this is. What happened here, and we read about it. Moses telling us what happened. You know, so I just wanted to, you know, lay that in there because you don't see him there, but it's a breakdown for Dan. You see what I'm saying? That um I can go into another time, but but as you see, it's twelve tribes of Israel. And Dan had one son. You see, everyone else had many, right? You notice that? Everybody else had many. Dan only had one son. That's it. So start at verse uh, 23 of uh, the 46th chapter of Genesis.
the book of Genesis, chapter 46, verse 23. Right. And the sons of Dan, Hushim, and the sons of Naphtali, Jazeel, and Gunai, and Jazar, Jazer, and Shalim. These are the sons of Bilhah, which Laban gave unto Rachel, his daughter. And she bare these unto Jacob. All the souls were seven. See, all the souls were seven. Read. All the souls that came with Jacob into Egypt, which came out of his loins, besides Jacob's son's wives, all the souls were three score and six. And the sons of Joseph, which were born him in Egypt, were two souls. All the souls of the house of Jacob, which came into Egypt, were three score and ten. So that's 70 souls. Go ahead. And he sent Judah before him unto Joseph to direct his face unto Goshen. And they came into the land of Goshen. And Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to meet Israel, his father, to Goshen and presented himself unto him. And he fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. And Israel said unto Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen thy face, because thou art yet alive. He said, Wow, he said, Let me die in peace, man. For you are yet alive. Can you imagine? How he felt all these years thinking that he was dead. And here he is, man. With authority. Remember, he had that dream where they're going to bow down to him. He was like, tell, and he rebuked them. But he kept it in mind. He said, tell me, tell, tell, tell me and your mother and your brothers actually bow down to you? It sounded like he was trying to be prideful. But here it is. What's happening now? He got to give obedience to, his, to, to Joseph. Because Joseph in charge. Joseph running things. Go ahead. And Joseph said unto his brethren, and unto his father's house, I will go up and show Pharaoh, and say unto him, My brethren and my father's house, which were in the land of Canaan, are come unto me. And the men are shepherds, for their trade have been to feed cattle. See, we were shepherd kings. Our trade was to feed cattle, right? And they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. And it shall come to pass when Pharaoh shall call you and shall say, what is your occupation? That ye shall say, thy servants trade have been about cattle from our youth even until now. Both we and also our fathers, that ye may dwell in the land of Goshen. For every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. Wow. So they could. <laughs> wow. So we, it says you go dwell in the land of Goshen because every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. Wow. I guess why? Because all the guys and the nations are idols. Go ahead. Genesis chapter 47 verse 1. Then Joseph came and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brethren... And their flocks and their herds and all that they have are come out of the land of Canaan. And behold, they are in the land of Goshen. And he took some of his brethren, even five men, and presented them unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto his brethren, What is your occupation? And they said unto Pharaoh. You see how he knew exactly what to tell them? That's in the present when he was telling them. Now the future comes. He said, hey, when you go before Pharaoh, you tell him this. What is your occupation? Read verse 20, 33. Book of Genesis chapter 46, verse 33. And it shall come to pass when Pharaoh shall call you and shall say, what is your occupation? That ye shall say, thy servants trade have been about cattle from our youth even until now. Right. So read. Verse 3 of chapter 47 of Genesis. And Pharaoh said unto his brethren, What is your occupation? Now you tell me, Joseph, what don't point. <laughs> First thing he asked them was what? What is your occupation? What is your occupation? Go ahead. And they said unto Pharaoh, Thy servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. They said moreover unto Pharaoh, For to sojourn in the land are we come. For thy servants have no pasture for their flocks. For the famine is sore in the land of Canaan. Now therefore, we pray thee, 
Let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. And Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, Thy father and thy brethren are come unto thee. The land of Egypt is before thee, and the best of the land make thy father and brethren to dwell. In the land of Goshen, let them dwell. And if thou knowest any man of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. And Joseph brought in Jacob his father, and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Jacob, How old art thou? And Jacob said unto Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are an hundred and thirty years. Wow. Man, he's a hundred and thirty years old. Read. Few and evil have the days of the years of my life been, and have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my fathers and the days of their pilgrimage. You said, you said, what kind of life did he live? What Few and evil. Few and evil. Few and evil. He's 130 years old saying few and evil are the days of his life. Go ahead. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. And Joseph placed his father and his brethren and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramesses, as Pharaoh had commanded. See that? So they got the best of the land in Egypt. The land of Ramses. Go ahead. And Joseph nourished his father and his brethren and all his father's household with bread according to their family. And there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. Which meaning there were people were dying because of food shortage. Read on. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the corn which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money fell us. Hear that? He said, When the money failed in the land of Egypt, and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread. Give us some food, man. For why should we die in thy presence, in your presence? For the money fell it. Couldn't buy nothing. Money, you have no money, it doesn't matter. You had no food. <laughs> you can't buy nothing. If you, I mean, you have money, but you can't buy nothing. There ain't no food, right? What's your money? How your money going to do any good for you? So go ahead. Verse 16. But, you know, we didn't have money, right? When they had cattle and flocks. People, I don't know where they get that from. It says money. Don't it? I mean, y'all help me now because I'm seeing money here. <laughs> what is it? Is we had, they had money or they didn't have money. That says money. Well, the money yeah. Go ahead. And Joseph said, give your cattle and I will give, I, and I will give you for your cattle if money fail. If what? If money Fail. If money fails. So there is money here. I, I mean, unless I'm seeing something different. If money fail, give me your cattle. <laughs> your cattle and I will I will give you for your cattle if money fail. Right? And they brought their cattle unto Joseph. And Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses and for the flocks and for the cattle of the herd. Well, now this, this is... This is this does represent wealth and so forth when you have all these things. You see what I mean? Okay. Cattle and flocks and all that stuff and crops and everything. But there was money also. Go ahead. And for the asses. And he fed them with bread for all their cattle for that year. When that year was ended, they came unto him the second year. And said unto him, We will not hide it from my mouth. So he did he did feed them in the land of Egypt in the old dead of winter. Like they try to say the end of the year, you know, to be <laughs> when the year was ended. No, that was in the springtime. Because the year starts in the spring between March and April. That's why they got April Fool's Day for all you fools that believe in <laughs> January 1st. It's the new year. Oh, streets like you the first month, the first day that we just seen, everybody celebrating this, the new year's. Shoot, I feel back there in East. 
coast, on the east coast. Do it seem like the flowers are blooming? No, it's snowing and ice and everything. Ain't no new year. Come on. The new year is in the spring when the bears come out of hibernation. The, the birds fly from the south back to the north and so forth. They get out of they get out of the cold weather. They fly to the to the south, man, where there's warmer weather. Even the birds got enough sense to realize this is winter. <laughs> this ain't no new year. This ain't no good time for me to be here. Let me out of here. Let me get out of here. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 18. When that year was ended, they came unto him the second year and said unto him, We will not hide it from my master, how that our money is spent. My master also has our herds of cattle. There is not aught left in the sight of my master, but our bodies and our land. That's all that's left. Go ahead. Wherefore shall we die before thine eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread, and we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh. Say, hey, they ready to be slaves. Just take care of us. Go ahead. And give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate. So... They gonna get seed in the dead of winter? No. Go ahead. And Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. For the Egyptians sold every man his field, because the famine prevailed over them. So Joseph did what? And Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. He bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. They sold all their lands to Pharaoh. Go ahead. For the Egyptians sold every man his field, because the famine prevailed over them. So the land became Pharaoh. So all the land became Pharaoh's. He owned their land now, read. And as for the people, he removed them to cities from one end of the borders of Egypt, even to the other end thereof. So he's moving the people around. From wherever they live, he's moving them around. Because he owned all the land. Now, now when Pharaoh died, who owned the land then? Joseph. Joseph. Go ahead. Verse 22. Only the land of the priest bought he not. For the priest had a portion assigned them of Pharaoh. And did eat their portion which Pharaoh gave them. Wherefore they sold not their land. Then Joseph said unto the people. Behold I have bought you this day and your land for Pharaoh. Lo here is seed for you and you shall sow the land. Right he said hey. Here's some seed for you, and you shall sow the land. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in the increase that ye shall give the fifth part unto Pharaoh, and four parts shall be your own, for seed of the field, and for your food, and for them of your households, and for food for your little ones. Right. So he says, And it shall come to pass in the increase that you shall give the fifth part unto Pharaoh, as you... As you increase and you grow, the fifth part you're going to give to Pharaoh. So they're able to keep how many parts? And four parts shall be your own for seed of the field and for your food and for them of your households and for food for your little ones, for your children. Go ahead. It's, uh, it's a lot. But mm -hmm. That's taxes, right? It's a lot. Tribute, you know. Come. Right. Go ahead. Uh, verse 25. And they said, thou hast saved our lives. Let us find grace in the sight of my master, and we will be Pharaoh's servants. See? He said, Thou hast saved our lives. You have saved our lives. Let us find grace, which is getting something you don't deserve, in the sight of my power, my master. So they call him Joseph, their master, these Egyptians. And we will be Pharaoh's servants. So they're going to be servants to Pharaoh. Be? And Joseph made it a law over the land of Egypt until this day that Pharaoh should have the fifth part except the land of the priest only, which became not Pharaoh's. See? Only the priests didn't have to pay tribute under Pharaoh. Last verse. Read this. And Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt in the country of Goshen. And they had possessions therein and grew and multiplied exceedingly. See? Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the country of Goshen, 
and they had possessions therein, and grew and multiplied exceedingly. That's how we became mighty. Once the Pharaoh died, then we became mighty. And we ruled Egypt. As you see, Joseph would be next in charge. He was the governor over Egypt. So next in charge after Pharaoh died would be Joseph. So that's that's what we're gonna that's all we're gonna do with deal with today.